Coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're going to take another look at the Microsoft Store. It's been a while. There's been some changes, some improvements, and uh, we're going to check that out next. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. And... This week, we're going to take another look at the Microsoft Store. It's been a while. Uh, I was going back through the old episodes. We've talked about apps here and there, of course, and different types of apps and so forth. But it's been a while on the Microsoft Store, and there have been some improvements and some changes um, in the past year. You know, Windows 11, 23, H2, and now 24, H2, et cetera. So I thought it might be a good time for that. Um, the Microsoft Store has a bad rep with power users. Uh, it's because it started off so terrible as the the Windows Store in Windows 8, you know, 12 years ago. Um, it was originally limited limited to just modern apps, you know, Metro apps and then UWP apps. But uh, thanks to a lot of strategy changes, um, they've really improved the store a lot. It, you can download and install almost any kind of app now. Um, it still does offer some content. There are TV shows and movies you can buy, and in the case of movies, rent. But most of the non-app game content is gone. Remember, they used to have music and eBooks and some other stuff. Um, but it is—it's just so much better now. It, it really is. And one of the key advantages of this store all along, which now makes so much more sense that there are great apps in it, is the more liberal licensing po policies, right? And so I, I always use Adobe as the example. If you were to buy Adobe Photoshop Elements from Adobe or retail or whatever, um, you could install that app on two computers and that's it. And if you try to use it on a third, you'd get a warning. You'd have to go back and deauthorize it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the standard policy with Microsoft Store apps is 10 devices. And uh, we'll talk, I'll show you how you can manage that. But um, I asterisks to this, there are some apps that bypass that. Um, one of the conditions of Microsoft kind of opening this up store and get, uh, opening the store up and getting more apps into it was giving app makers the option to not have to use this more liberal licensing policy. Most of them do. The only one I've run into that doesn't is Affinity, and they're not horrible. Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, and so forth. You can sign in with your Affinity account, and I've I've installed this thing on dozens of computers, never had any problems, but they actually don't use the Microsoft Store licensing. Okay, so you're probably all at least somewhat familiar with the Microsoft Store app. Pretty basic stuff. I don't think I have to go through uh, any of the, you know, the silly navigation bits other than just to explain from a high level, there's these high level groups. There are in each of these sections, um, individual content items like you see down here, like these apps, but there's also things like this, which is a collection, right? And so this is a landing page that has certain types of apps. So there's nothing non-standard that you wouldn't see on any app store. I mean, it's, it's all fairly common stuff. Um, if we click on one of these things, you can go in, you know, depending on the app and depending on whether you bought it or downloaded it in the past, you're going to see different options here, but install, get, purchase, you know, there's different choices, all the standard stuff, right? No, no, no big surprise here. A um, couple of small things that are kind of cool about this that people don't know about probably is the share button. Um, the more options button just goes to window share. So you can share a link to the store with someone over email or however else you share through window share. But this one actually copies a link, uh, to your, uh, clipboard, which you can then, if you knew how to use the keyboard, uh, paste into a web browser and you can go to the web listing for this. Um, not particularly interesting. We're already in the store, but I'm going to be talking about Widget and the Windows Package Manager. And if you want to automate app installs, that's actually a really useful thing to know about. So we'll talk about that more in just a little bit. The other one is you don't actually have to go all the way into those listings. If you mouse over, you can see it does this little fly up thing, right? So it kind of saves a step. You can just click from here. You don't have to dive all the way in. So that's, you know, that's okay. <laughs> right. Um, most of the content stuff that you see up here is fairly obvious. Um, two of the things that are new and maybe a little odd is there's an arcade section in addition to gaming. Obviously, gaming is games, apps is apps. But when you go into arcade, it's also games. But these are games you can play, typically casual games, without having to download them for first. So if you go into this um, Tetris-looking game and click pay, Play Now, it actually launches in 
a unique window and it just starts right up. You don't, nothing gets installed. It's running over the internet. I'm not into this kind of thing personally, but maybe you are. Um, that's way, that's one way to do that. And then, uh, entertainment movies and TV shows again, not particularly interesting. I wouldn't recommend buying anything from Microsoft, uh, from a movie or TV show perspective. Renting is fine. Uh, renting is a one-off, so no big deal there. But AI Hub is also new. And of course, Microsoft's AI push over the past year or two is what resulted in this. Um, to my knowledge, there are no on-device only AI apps in here. All of these apps are either pure cloud play apps that would work on any computer or in some cases, um, hybrid apps, for example. I think, yeah, CapCut is an example of an app that uh, works fine if you don't have an MPU in your computer. Uh, but if you do, it will take advantage of that. So that's kind of interesting. Um, by nature, most of these apps are, of course, creator type apps, uh, mostly photo video editing, uh, photo and video editing. Uh, but we're also starting to see some uh, other types of content creation apps around text, like email and, and writing and so forth. So that's all in there. And that is pretty straightforward. Um, most people probably, you know, are sort of familiar with these two bits, but don't really know how they work. The first one is this profile button. This gives you quick links to mostly to the Microsoft uh, account website online, also to app settings. Um, the, the one little kind of strange secret in here is this one here. It says offline permissions. This is related to games and you can only have one PC that is designated for your account associated with your account, right? That you can play the games you get from the store offline. Um, you can change that twice in a year and then you're out <laughs> so you want to be careful with that that's why that one's off but most of this other stuff is is pretty straightforward you could turn off video autoplay if you don't like that kind of annoyance but nothing else surprising in there uh, and we're going to come back to that in one moment um, but the other one is the library now this that sounds straightforward but it's actually kind of a mix of different views here so this is where you would go if you wanted to update apps manually so right now you can see i have four app updates. If I check for updates, I might actually see more fill out here. Um, I can click update all to also uh, just update the ones that are sitting there pending. Um, and we'll do the first three, but it will eventually hit the fourth one as well. Um, but the more interesting thing here to me, because these apps will update in time, is this kind of filter sort control down here. So below the fold here, these are the apps and games and actually other content that you've purchased from Microsoft or have downloaded from the Microsoft store. So this is your library, like this thing says. And by default, the view here is only things that are installed on this PC and they're sorted by date with the newest at the top, right? And so the view here is the, yeah, and so more filling up, but the, the view here is those apps and games that have been updated most recently. But this is also a really neat way to go back in and find the apps that you know you like that you've already gotten. Maybe you bought some. And to do that, you turn off that. So now it's going to show you all the apps. And then you sort them by name. And this is kind of nice because I bought Adobe products. I talked about Affinity Photo. I bought both of those. And so I know I've, I bought it through the store. If I want to go get it and install it quickly from here, it's already installed, right? I've, obviously, I've, I'm, this particular computer, I've already done it. But I could trigger that download here. So this is kind of a neat interface, um, literally for your library as you know, it's not, a, it's not a quirky name. It's <laughs> very descriptive. Um, but there's that account management bit, right? And this is where you go to the Microsoft store. So if you click on, uh, either the, I think it's the first two links, you can also sign out. And if you wanted to sign in with a different, uh, Microsoft account, which I didn't do, um, it should go to the Microsoft web store, uh, wait, <laughs> Microsoft account website, but it's not. So I will just do this manually. Um, and so we all, we've done this a million times now, sign in. If I only had a password manager, actually I do have a password manager, but that's okay. And da, 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 cause there's a pass key on the computer, right? We talked about that when our pass key, uh, it's skipping right up through it. So we're not doing that, I guess. Um, all right. This is, this is the pass key experience. And this is why it's so great to sign in with a um, a password manager, which I've not configured for this account on this computer or in this browser, I should say. That's okay. I'll just do it through my phone like a normal person. 
and in we go. Okay. Now, this link back here, even though it says manage account and devices, if that had worked, <laughs> you would actually just go to this page. This is the, the primary page of the account. Um, you would expect it to go here because this is the devices page, but that's not what it does. Um, this will take a little bit to load because unfortunately this is my main account and I have signed into a million devices and uh, we'll get through that. <laughs> so at the bottom of this list is this item, Microsoft St Store Device Management. And this is going to be a slightly contorted view again, because my account has been kind of grandfathered in. I'm actually allowed to have more than 10 devices associated with the store, but typically you would only have 10 as it says here. But once this thing loads and it's going to take a little while because again, too many yeah, I have some kind of special access for some reason. So I have uh, 97 devices associated with my account. Um, but the point of this interface is this is where you would go to unlink older devices. So there's no way to sort these by date, which is silly, but I know I must have some that are at least two, three, three years old, four years old. Here we go. So I could safely go in and, un, you know, uh, unassociate devices from my account. That's the point of this interface. So um, just something to know about if uh, most people probably even over the past decade probably haven't hit that 10 device limit, but we're, we are closing in on the time when uh, a lot of people might. So it's just good to know um, that if you go to the store and it says, hey, you can't do this, um, this is where you would manage um, that license, right, that you associate with each of your computers so you can access all the content you buy from the store. OK, so given all this. Um, I haven't really made a great case for there being uh, higher quality uh, apps, but there are right. There's a there's an interesting combination of uh, really good apps and then some you know kind of the standard mobile apps that aren't particularly interesting. But you know CapCut, for example, Paint.net. You were starting to see a lot of these really nice, uh, complicated, fully featured desktop apps in here. So my strategy with the store and with apps in general on Windows is that I always go to the store first. If there's a version of the app in the store, that's where I get it. Very rare exceptions on that one. I think Mozilla Firefox might be one uh, where I would actually get the web version first. Um, and the reason I do that is because of that licensing, right? The, the problem with it is you have to kind of search. So you're like, well, I might want Google Chrome. Do they have that in the store? And you look and they do not. <laughs> so, okay, I guess I'm getting that one from the web, right? So it's kind of silly. Um, you, but most people don't install apps a lot. They do it once on a device and they're kind of done for a period of time in my case because i review laptops i um you know i have to do this in a more efficient manager so uh, manage um in a more efficient manner so there are other ways to acquire apps obviously you can go to the web as an individual download apps like everybody does uh, microsoft windows or microsoft includes a package manager with windows 11 called winget or the windows package manager it's a command line tool which is really good for batch installs of apps. Um, that's what I use. And so in the next episode, we're going to look at Winget again. We, I'm sure we've looked at it at least once, but it has been a while. And some of the automation capabilities, uh, which are available from third parties, have actually changed over the past year too. So there's some new information there as well. So we'll be back soon with that. Um, I hope you found this interesting and useful. Um, we'll have a new episode of Hands on Windows every Thursday. You can find out more at twit.tv slash HFW. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to everyone, uh, especially our Club Twit members. We love you so much. And I'll see you again next week.